Have you ever heard of the Sydney Cove? Not the Sydney Cove in Port Jackson, but the ship. Well, it was here in the Ferno group of islands, bordering Bass Straits north of Tasmania, that in 1797, the ship, Sydney Cove, was put aground to save her crew and her cargo of more than 7,000 gallons of rum and china goods, candles, soap, and even some leather goods. Over here is where the Sydney Cove grounded just by that rock. When the tempo settled a bit, the men began getting into the casks of rum. Their survival, depending too much on hard work and no drunkenness, Hamilton ordered the liquor be taken across the strait to this island, where a guard was posted. Of course, this island later became well known as Rum Island. But unsure of the success or the duration of the rescue attempt, by early May, when the hull had collapsed, Hamilton had the crew erect a large building so that they could survive winter. The location does provide an excellent viewing point, taking in the cargo landing area, the wreck site, and the sudden approaches to Preservation Island. It is also within direct sight of the signal cairn erected by the crew at the eastern side of the island. Just look at this view. This is where the signal lookout was set up to look for a ship. It would, I imagine, have been keenly visited by the crew soon after the departure of the longboat to Port Jackson to search for a ship coming to rescue them. Here, a signal fire could have been lit if they saw a ship coming. Unfortunately, on the return voyage to Port Jackson, the Eliza went missing, including six men from the Sydney Cove. The Francis returned twice to take off cargo, but it wasn't until March 1798 that the last man and cargo was taken off Preservation Island. <laughs> Wonderfully beautiful Preservation Island that's so steeped in early Australian history. From the very first moment we stepped on the shore and beheld the actual location of the Sydney Coves, our imaginations were ignited. And each time we returned, we have gleamed even more of the drama that took place at this location more than two centuries ago. Now few know of its importance. For it was here on the rescue that Matthew Flinders perceived the sizable seas and had the notion that a strait separated mainland Australia from these islands. And on his return to Sydney it was that firm belief of his that convinced Governor Hunter to lend him a ship. And thus a year later, George Bass and Matthew Flinders not only became the first to sail through Bass Straits, but they were the first to circumnavigate Tasmania. Till next time, safe anchorages and fair winds from Jack and Jude. <laughs>